Paul here with Everyday Saturday Garage and we're going to shift gears a little bit from working on Harleys to working on boats. Now I was given this boat by my father-in-law and it had been sitting for a while and I took it down to the lake to get it fired up and running and it wouldn't start. So I'm going to let you know the steps that I went through getting to the conclusion of what was wrong with this motor. Okay, first thing, you gotta start with fresh fuel. Now, fuel tank was drained, so I added fresh fuel, started at this fuel filter. I did notice that when I was priming the engine with the bulb, it was pretty hard to get the fuel flowing through that filter. Well, after a closer examination of the filter, I could see some lightly colored powder in there. So the first thing I did was went ahead and replaced this filter. The second thing I did was check the fuses. Now there are fuse, two fuse blocks on the front of this engine and I did find a blown fuse. It was a 25 amp main fuse. I replaced it. It hasn't blown since, but I could crank on it a whole bunch and the engine would still never fire. The next thing I did was check spark. Now you can get these little spark checkers at Harbor Freight Tools for, for pretty inexpensive. They're definitely worth the money if you're just checking to see if you got spark. Anyway, the engine had spark, but it was getting no fuel. Okay, so the next thing I did was to pull my high pressure fuel line right here, and I stuffed it in a gas tank and fired it up to see if I had any pressure there and I had no high pressure feeding my fuel injectors. So the next thing I did was to go ahead and pull the VST. It's the vapor separator tank and it kind of wraps around where your oil filter is on that engine. Now, when I drained the screw at the bottom, I could smell the stale fuel in there. The boat had been sitting a while, so even though the tank was clean and the filter and sediment bowl was clean, this thing was full of stale fuel, which caused the high pressure fuel pump, which sits inside of here, to freeze up and go bad. Now, after doing a little bit of research, Mercury's OEM pump to replace inside this thing, it's like $306. Well, you can go on Amazon and get these pumps. They range anywhere from $200 down to $20. I got one on order. It's a mid-range pump. It cost me 80 bucks. It ought to be here in two days. And we'll give it a shot and see what it does. Now, honestly, this doesn't seem to be a bad job. So don't let the job intimidate you. Honestly, it was five lines, one electrical connector, and three bolts. Pretty simple. So go back to your basics, take pictures, mark your lines, and go from there. Now, if I didn't say it before, this engine, it is a 2006 Mercury four-stroke electronic fuel injected. Now, this seems to be a very common problem with those engines. They just sit too long and the fuel, especially if it's ethanol fuel, will cause these fuel pumps to freeze up and go bad. So as far as using stabilizer, very important, especially probably the marine stuff. I was told it'll last three years compared to one year with the red stuff. So definitely run that stuff through your engine before you winterize it. So once you get your pump off, or your, your VST off, and you get the top half separated. Now this, you can see, I've already pulled the pump out, but there is a float in there. Thing kind of a weird setup, but get yourself some carburetor, go to cleaning that, make sure your drain valve's clean, the tank's clean, get up inside there, spray everything down, there's needle and seat, make sure everything is clean and functional. Now I did verify that the pump was bad. You can go ahead and bench check it. A couple of wires and a battery, 12 volt battery, just go ahead. Uh, it is marked with your positive and your negative. 
and if, if you want to be sure that your pump is bad you can go ahead and bench check it just to make sure okay the pump came in today it is a quantum pump this was a $84 pump from Amazon came with uh, the grommet base plate gasket and a zip tie and even come with a fancy little sticker okay so the fuel pump is installed the VST is back in place all my lines everything's hooked up the last thing I did was I found this fuel filter it was covered by a sheath I had to slide it back sure enough I pulled it out and it was uh, full of stale nasty fuel so I went up to the store and picked up another filter uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hook this to the garden hose and see if it pops off okay it popped right off on the second turn of the key thing seems to be running good checked it over no fuel leaks or nothing like that we're ready for the water Okay, so I'm out on the water today. Boat runs great. Fuel pump, I, it was like the second turn of the key. That thing popped right off. I ran it on the muffs. Checked for fuel leaks and everything. Everything looked good, so I went ahead and sealed it up. Brought it out on the water next day. Boat's running great. Uh, don't let the job of changing that high pressure fuel pump intimidate you. I do have small hands. I have doctor hands for a mechanic, but uh, if you have some uh, big mitts, it might be a little bit more difficult. Just uh, take your time and press through and uh, you'll be a heck of a lot happier in the money you saved than spending it on an expensive boat repair. So I'm just gonna get out here and enjoy and do a little fishing. Until next time, remember to come back and see us here at Everyday Saturday Garage. Thanks for watching.